Welcome back to the show, everyone. We're having a, a delightful time talking about college level curricula for high schoolers. I hope that this isn't terrifying any of the high school listeners that are out there, but that they're excitedly listening to think about the different programs that might be available to them and how they can get prepared for college level work. So in our first segment, we talked about the International Baccalaureate Program with Christine Sawicki. In the last segment, we talked with Michael Yeager about the Advanced Placement or AP Program. And now we're going to talk about the dual enrollment program or dual credit program. And, and in order to unpack some of the subtleties there, I'm welcoming my colleague, Zaragoza Guerra. Welcome to the show, Zaragoza. Hi, welcome. Hi, Ian. Glad to be here. <laughs> it's, it's great to have you. So we were just talking in between the segments that IP, IB is really standard. AP is fairly consistent. When we say dual enrollment... Boy, it could mean just about anything. Um, there are so many different potential uh, expressions of a dual enrollment or a dual credit kind of program. Um, so how would you introduce this to families that are wondering about what exactly what exactly it is? Yeah, that that's a really great segue because the other curriculums are fairly standard to a certain degree. And, and you know, they, they do provide standardization no matter where you are in the country. I think something like dual enrollment can oftentimes be either state dependent or regionally dependent, uh, local dependent. Uh, it might even depend upon the community college or the high school that you're going to. Um, there's probably not some standard uh, curriculum throughout the country for something like dual enrollment. You might have some standardized programs within a state like you know, Running Start uh, out in Washington State is a really right. great example of that. Uh, but for the most part, um, a lot of these uh, curriculums are, you know, the agreements that are articulated between a high school and a community college might be done just between that one community college and that one high school or within a school district. Um, and, um, and, and so you're, you're not going to get uh, one answer uh, when we're talking about something like dual enrollment just because uh, these programs do differ from locality to locality, state to state. Yeah, we talked a little bit about how with the IB program, when you're signing up for the diploma, it's essentially all inclusive. You start doing it and it's got the entire thing laid out for you. With the AP program, you're choosing a little more a la carte, but your responsibility as a family is to make sure you're choosing the right courses for you, your student that fits them. With dual enrollment, there's almost a need to read the fine print on the promise of academic credit. I remember being a high school student in Arizona. One of the local community colleges came down and said, you can sign up for this dual enrollment class at Rio Salado Community College. And it sounds great, but the fine print says, well, this credit really only applies at Rio Salado College. It's going to cost me extra money to pay for that credit. But unless I'm going there, there's no value to me. And so how do students and families make sense of this? Because it is extremely complicated with all of these different articulation agreements for folks to figure out exactly what they're looking at. How would you recommend they start breaking that down? I, I would start with trying to figure out what your overall goals are for your college going experience. If you are hoping, if you're a family that's hoping to, you know, perhaps, uh, you know, go out of state, right? Uh, you know, the world is your oyster and you're, you're hoping to um, jump from your uh, high school to somewhere completely different, then perhaps a dual enrollment program might not necessarily be the best fit for you. If you know, however, that, you know, chances are you're going to stay a little bit more local. Um, you might even be staying within state. Um, and you've got an idea that you might want to be going to your regional college or university, public college or university. Um, or um, if you're in Washington State and you know you wanted to go to one of the publics, you know, that might be a really great option for you. Most other localities, you're you're probably thinking, I know I want to go to the regional college or university. Um, then you might be wanting to consider something like a dual enrollment program. If your overall goal is to save money in the long run, perhaps a dual enrollment program might be a good fit for you. Um, and part of the reason that I say that is because 
there are probably about 26 states throughout the country that offer dual enrollment for free. And so you can get almost two years worth of credit um, at a college or university for free. Um, my, I, I have two nieces and, and one of them uh, chose to enroll in, let's say, the IB program. She knew she wanted to go to the University of Texas and uh, she did so and she was able to get some credit and placement there. Another niece decided, you know, she wanted to become a, a school teacher and she enrolled in the dual enrollment program. She knew she wanted to go to school a little bit more locally. She did. She enrolled as a junior, you know, wow. straight out of the bat. She got two free years of tuition doing a program like this. Um, so you need to ask yourself, what what is it that I'm valuing here? Or what is it that's going to be important to me? Is it the name recognition of the school or is it saving some money? Okay. Um, and attending um, a, a, you know, one of the, the regional schools around me. Um, I think if you're in that latter category, then a dual enrollment program might be, you know, the option for you. Yeah. And I think is the best option in comparison to AP and IB, because you're really setting up your pathway. You're saying, this is what I want to do. And these are the steps that I'm going to take in order to accomplish this. And to your point, you can save a lot of money. You can save time. You can get started on your professional career a little bit more quickly. Those are all things that can sound very appealing, but that pathway is specific to that student and their goals. And so one of the challenges with dual enrollment is that kids will hear it and they'll say, oh, great, I can save money, I can save time. But that's probably not the case if you're looking at the other kinds of more competitive schools that you described earlier. And so one of those challenges I think that students encounter when they're looking at, and this is this is actually one of the unique things about the dual enrollment is that it's often available to a student alongside an AP program or alongside an IB program. Most schools don't offer both AP and IB. They're going to do one or the other. But almost always, if there is dual enrollment, there's going to be a more rigorous, more challenging option available at the high school. And that can be a real challenge for a student to think about which is going to be better on their college application. How does that show up for you? So you've got students that are, that are at the same high school. Some are doing an AP kind of a la carte program, and some are doing a dual enrollment program at the local community college, like what we've described here. They're all college level classes, but what's, how do those things show up in an application? Or a university? I think when it lands in, let's say, an admission officer's lap and they're, you know, trying to compare these two curriculums, if you put yourself in an admission officer's shoes, the reality is they know and they are absolutely familiar with the IB curriculum and the AP curriculum because they are standardized right? They're standardized throughout the country. If you're taking an AP class in Washington State versus an AP class out in Delaware, it's the same curriculum. So you're familiar with it. You know the rigor of the, the curriculum. And so you're able to compare those two applicants against each other. If you are comparing someone who did a dual enrollment program out in Idaho versus a dual enrollment program in Connecticut and comparing them to someone who did the AP curriculum out in New York, there's a familiarity That's right. with the AP curriculum. That's right. And you're not necessarily going to know how to compare those dual enrollment programs or what the rigor is and 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 so forth. So if you are at a fairly competitive college or university as an admission officer, you might lean a little bit more towards that AP curriculum or that IB curriculum, just because you are from a little because bit Because you know it. You know it a little bit okay. better. You've got your limited time as part of the reality. And I think understanding some of the unique elements of community college courses can be very hard. It could be that a community college class is incredibly rigorous and that the teacher mm -hmm. is wonderful and a student learned a huge amount of content, but there's no way to know that from the course listing on the transcript. Absolutely. And at least with AP or IB, there's some sense of consistency when we look from place to place. And that consistency can often be verified by the, the, the exam score that a student gets at the end of the year, which you yeah. don't have enrollment. 
And, and that's the other difference when we're talking about getting credit or placement is that because the AP curriculum and the IB curriculum are standardized, many colleges and universities can let you know upfront what credit and placement you would get based upon your exam scores. There's no real exam score with respect to a, a dual enrollment class. Um, and when a college or university is giving credit or placement for let's say even a transfer student, um, sometimes they might not necessarily have an articulation agreement which is kind of like a you know a catalog with equivalencies that say that states, hey, this particular class at this school is equivalent to this particular class at my school. Okay, so you might not necessarily have that, and when you're going into the process of granting credit or placement, even for a transfer student, sometimes you have to look at each course, you have to dive into the course catalog, um, get a feel for whether or not that course would be equivalent to one of the courses that are offered. Um, and so you're not necessarily going to be knowing upfront which of your dual enrollment classes are going to transfer over to a college or university unless your dual enrollment program has an articulation agreement with right university. with the university, which again puts the onus on the family to do the homework to investigate. So it's it, there's just a lot more fine print and red tape to kind of go through to confirm that that's a good good pathway. One of the other things I want to ask you about dual enrollment is kind of interesting because sometimes you've got access to some really unique courses, right? IB and AP have fairly standard buckets of of programs that they're in. There are students out there who exhaust their home curriculum at their high school and community college is the only place for them to go to take college level classes because they don't have an AP program or an IB program at their school. How should students be mindful of taking the classes that they're interested in versus taking the classes that are kind of the broad subjects that colleges are looking for, your math, your science, et cetera, you know, throwing a business class in there or mm -hmm. psychology, economics, so you know, sort of fit into the social science space, but how would you recommend students think about that? I would recommend that students take a look at their the overall core first and try to cover your core classes um, primarily. Yeah. Um, and then dip into some of those elective classes, those more fun classes. Um, and, you know, that that's those are the options that you have within high school. And so when you're looking at a dual enrollment program where you are technically still enrolled in high school, you should be looking to do the same thing in terms of taking those core classes. Yeah. Um, the reality is when you are looking at a college or university, your first two years are spent taking core classes. You don't really dive into your major, into those fun classes until year two or year three, right? And, and so you need to kind of mimic that experience with your dual enrollment uh, experience. You know, focusing on those core classes that those colleges and universities are going to be wanting you to take your freshman, sophomore year classes. You're guaranteeing that you're going to get, you know, perhaps, not necessarily guaranteeing, but I say you're, you're, you know, making it more likely that you might get a little bit more credit or placement. Right. Um, take if, care of the foundation first and exactly. then build on that foundation. I'm going to ask you a question I asked both Michael and Christine. Uh, you're out on the road recruiting for an admission office at a university you work for, you meet a great kid, you've interviewed them, they're wonderful. When their application comes across your desk in the spring and you're reading their application, what curriculum are you most hoping that they have to help you to advocate for that student in the admission process? Depends on the schools that I was working. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, for like an, an MIT or Caltech, I would have said, hey, I'd like to see the AP curriculum or the IB curriculum. Okay. Um, if I were in in uh, working for the conservatory, it would not necessarily have mattered um, which which of those schools. Um, so I, you know, my advice is usually don't necessarily go by the the school that I work <laughs> for, but yeah. go for the school you want to really. Uh, go to. And I, I'd probably say, you know, as I said, 
I, I think this is a great opportunity for that kind of student who, who really wants to save money and who knows they really want to go to that regional school, uh, that regional university, or in the case of Washington State, you know, yeah. one of the, the, the Washington publics. This is a, a great option to, you know, really get a lot of value out of your education and not be uh, necessarily, you know, having to take on uh, as much debt as other students. You know, Zaragoza, you're the third of three educators that has basically said whatever curriculum is best for the kid is the one that they should take, which is perfect. It's just exactly on brand for Bright Horizons College Coach to say what's best for the kid. Um, so I love it. Thanks for coming on the show. I appreciate your your perspective. Uh, you're welcome. Glad to be here. Folks, next week, we're going to be talking all about college visits. We've got a great double episode with college finance and college admissions. So join us again the same time next week. We look forward to talking you through what it's like on those campuses. And uh, I hope everyone out there is having a great start to your summer. Be well. Mm -hmm.